Hopefully, I'm ready. <laughs>
A moment of silence was held in the Capitol Gazette newsroom and in newsrooms nationwide. The moment of silence began at 2.33 in the afternoon. That's the same time last Thursday a gunman opened fire inside of the Capitol Gazette offices, killing five people. Before the moment of silence, city leaders took time to thank the brave first responders. Within 60 seconds they were at the building. Within two minutes they were in the building. They went in without a moment's hesitation and thankfully brought the incident to a close without any further loss of life. The suspect allegedly had problems with the paper, filing a defamation lawsuit against the Gazette back in 2012. Local 24 is your local election headquarters, and some of your local candidates want to hear from you about the immigration debate. They're going on a listening tour focusing on issues immigrants face in county institutions, such as the Shelby County Sheriff's Office and Shelby County Schools. Lee Harris, the Democratic candidate for Shelby County Mayor, and Tammy Sawyer, the County Commission District 7 candidate, are among the candidates scheduled to attend. They'll be at La Guadalupana on Suffer Avenue tonight starting at 6 o'clock. The woman who climbed the Statue of Liberty on the 4th of July is now officially charged. 44-year-old Teresa Kumo was arrested Wednesday, accused of trespassing and interference with government agency functions. She climbed to the base of the statue in protest against President Trump's immigration policies. Now, while atop the statue, she waved a T-shirt that read, Rise and Resist and Trump Care Makes Us Sick. It's 5.07, still ahead on Good Day Memphis. Attacked over a MAGA hat, the viral video of the unprovoked attack that has people talking. Plus, white families earning more than African Americans. See the drastic difference many want changed coming up next. Now, live from WATN in high definition, this is Local 24 News. Good day, Memphis, at 5 a.m. Good morning and thank you for joining us for Local 24 News at 5 a.m. I'm Gina Francine. We're staying on top of a story we first broke on our local Memphis mobile app. A man behind bars accused of killing a teen after Bartlett's 4th of July fireworks show. More arrests could come. 17-year-old Kentrell Spite is charged with murder. He is accused of killing a 17-year-old whose name has not yet been released on Tuesday night. The victim was shot multiple times outside a Taco Bell on Highway 70 next to the Bartlett Park that hosted the fireworks show. Now, police don't believe it was a random shooting, saying the two had fought several times before. Lawyers for the family of the man found dead in a van in the Memphis police impound lot say he would be alive today if police had paid attention. What we do know is that he survived for some period of time and it's possible he could have survived for the rest of his life had somebody looked in the van. Barter Perez Hernandez and another man were shot during a robbery last December. The other victim was in hospital for weeks. He discovered Hernandez's body after picking up his van from the impound lot in February. A forensic pathologist testified Hernandez might have survived the shooting if officers had checked the van at the time. The Hernandez family says it's considering a lawsuit. Now to some local good news this morning. We're getting our first glimpse of the new Germantown Performing Arts Center that will change the way you enjoy live events. The GPAC will break ground on a new 1200 seat outdoor venue this fall. Visitors won't have to get all dressed up for a formal theater experience. They'll get to take a seat in the Grove instead. The performance space will be right next to the existing GPAC building on Exeter Road with a stage as large as the one inside. A 32 foot wide screen will simulcast performances from the indoor GPAC stage to audiences outside, giving you the chance to enjoy live performances and movies under the stars. This is the Grove as it would be set up to have a live band. We've got this casual setting. We're keeping as many trees as we possibly can because the shade that happens with all of the surrounding trees is absolute magic. The project is expected to cost $4 million and open next summer. Thousands of people are in the dark this morning after a line of storms moved through last night. Here's a live look at the latest numbers from MLGW. Right now, there are about 1,000 customers without power. Now that's down from the near 9,000 around 11 last night. The outages are widespread, but the hardest hit areas stretch between Binghampton, East Memphis, and Orange Mound. The storm leaving a path of destruction in parts of the Bluff City. Our crews found this massive tree down on Walnut Grove and Goodlett in East Memphis. Happening now, crews are working to clean that up. If you see any damage in your neighborhood, share your pictures with us. Send them to shared at localmemphis.com. 
updated security for MLGW that customers and other visitors will now face at the door. The utility will start using metal detectors and handheld devices at the community's div five vi division offices, the administration building on South Main and the training center on La Raleigh LaGrange Road. This all begins next Tuesday, July 10th. The security measures are required by a 2017 state law in order for MLGW to continue prohibiting the possession of firearms within its public buildings. Local in Arkansas this morning, a computer system that's helping to track potential problems in children before they become worse. The program tracks issues in student behavior, attendance, and grades to identify potential threats early. Now, some school districts in the state already use the system. The program's creator says he designed the system more than 30 years ago and recently presented it to lawmakers. Can you identify students before they become a problem? We take things that take six weeks to organize down to six seconds. The creator says he believes his system could have prevented the Parkland mass shooting. Newsrooms across the country came together Thursday to honor the victims of the deadly shooting at a Maryland newspaper. A moment of silence was held in the Capitol Gazette newsroom and in newsrooms nationwide. The moment of silence began at 2.33 in the afternoon. Now that's the same time last Thursday, a gunman opened fire inside of the Capitol Gazette offices, killing five people. Before the moment of silence, city leaders took time to thank the brave first responders. Within 60 seconds, they were at the building. Within two minutes, they were in the building. They went in without a moment's hesitation and thankfully brought the incident to a close without any further loss of life. The suspect allegedly had problems with the paper, filing a defamation lawsuit against the Gazette back in 2012. Local 24 is your local election headquarters, and some of your local candidates want to hear from you about the immigration debate. They're going on a listening tour focusing on issues immigrants face in county institutions, such as the Shelby County Sheriff's Office and Shelby County Schools. Lee Harris, a Democratic candidate for Shelby County Mayor, and Tammy Sawyer, County Commission District 7 candidate, are among the candidates scheduled to attend. They'll be at La Guadalupana on Summer Avenue tonight at 6 o'clock. The woman who climbed the Statue of Liberty on the 4th of July is now officially charged. 44-year-old Teresa Kumo was arrested Wednesday, accused with trespassing and interference with government agency functions. She climbed to the base of the statue in protest against President Trump's immigration policies. Now, while atop the statue, she waved a T-shirt that read, Rise and Resist, and Trump Care Makes Us Sick. It's 5.07, still ahead on Good Day Memphis. Attacked over a MAGA hat, the viral video of the unprovoked attack that has people talking. Plus, white families earning more than African Americans. See the drastic difference many want changed coming up next.